This is a portable DIY synth. It has a ribbon sensor for controlling pitch. Also, it has a photoresistor acting as a distance sensor for controlling the volume and filter. And this whole thing is battery powered. So, let's go outside to play it. Alright, let's take a closer look at how this synth works. It looks like spaghetti, but I can promise you that the circuit is actually straightforward. It's just a bunch of jumper wires, breadboard, bit of resistors, and this magical little thing. Here we have the heart of this portable synth, and it is called Daisy, which is what this whole video is all about. Daisy is made by Electrosmith, who is graciously sponsoring this video. I was planning on making this video regardless because I have been a huge fan of Daisy ever since I bought it almost two years ago. So what is Daisy? Daisy is an embedded audio platform. We can understand it easier by comparing it to Arduino. Arduino is a microcontroller that can receive sensor data and send it to a computer. And we can use that sensor data to control a software synthesizer that is programmed in pure data, for example. Pure Data is a visual programming language in which we connect a bunch of different boxes together to create a custom synth. And we can listen with our headphone that's connected to the computer's audio jack. Daisy is similar, but we can put the synth code inside it. And the audio will come out of it also. That means we don't need to have our laptop in order to perform an instrument that's powered by Daisy. And that is embedded audio. There are many reasons to use embedded audio in your next project. In no particular order, here's a list. Reason number one, shorter latency. With the Arduino to pure data setup, there's a decent amount of latency between the sensor input and the output sound. With embedded audio, that latency is near zero. Reason number two, no laptop required equals less setup. In the Arduino setup, we connect the USB cable to Arduino, open up Pure Data or Max MSP, and start the serial communication before we can begin making music. And if we wanted to record the audio, we open up Ableton and set up a special audio configuration. With embedded audio, we connect power to the instrument, whether via portable battery or AC power, and then we connect the audio cable to our equipment of choice whether it's headphone, guitar amp, or audio interface. And that's it! By using audio interface, we can record audio the usual way. It feels magical to have the sound come from the custom instrument itself. It's also less set up when using hardware effects. For example, we can just directly connect the instrument to a guitar pedal. With the Arduino setup, it's a lot of hassle to use hardware effects. Reason number three. No more endless adjustments. With the Arduino setup, it is easier to adjust parameters while we play around with our instrument. We can change parameters and hear the result in real time. This is convenient when we're refining our algorithm and sound design. But it's so easy to feel tempted to change the parameters every time we rehearse, for example, because the adjustable parameters are right in front of us. With embedded audio, we can commit. After putting together an algorithm and sound design that are good enough, we can upload the code into DAISY. Now during rehearsals, in order to adjust the algorithm, we have to bring out our laptop, 
connect DAISY via USB cable, open up the programming software, adjust the code, and then upload the code. It's less convenient, which is good during situations like rehearsals. That bit of inconvenience will stop us from getting lost in endless adjustments. Embedded audio encourages commitment. Reason number four, less time on a laptop. Most of us spend all day with our laptop. Well, at least I do. With embedded audio, we can just close our computer and just get lost in the music. We're not tempted to open the web browser and check social media, for example. Reason number five, being able to go outside to play a custom built instrument. Go to a local hiking trail or a park and let nature inspire your music. Or go camping with your friends and jam out around the campfire. Reason number six, embedded audio is great for live performance. First of all, our live setup will be a bit more simplified. Also, we no longer have to worry about our aggressive guitar player in a band accidentally hitting the $1,200 MacBook Pro on stage. Furthermore, laptops can be unpredictable. Personally, I had my laptop malfunction days before a performance, for example. Another mishap was when my laptop succumbed to the cold during an outdoor performance. Next winter, I do need to test if Daisy can survive the Midwest cold. So now that I got you excited to try out embedded audio, let's learn more about Daisy. First thing I have to mention is that it's very affordable. It's only $29.95 and it'll be shipped already soldered too. Another key point is that it's very compact. It's about the size of a stick of gum, so around the size of an Arduino Nano. And much like an Arduino, Daisy has analog inputs, 12 total actually. We can connect sensors like ribbon sensor to these pins and Daisy can read the incoming data. It of course has digital ins for buttons and etc., and digital outs for LEDs and etc. There's also an SD card interface, which will come in handy when developing a custom granular synth, for example. And I2C pins for connecting components like an accelerometer. One of the key hardware differences is that DAISY has two DAC outputs, which can be used as CB sources for your Eurorack setup. And the main difference is that DAISY has stereo audio ins and outs, 96kHz and 24-bit quality. And how we connect electronics component is pretty much the same as we do with an Arduino. So let's take a closer look again at the inside of this portable synth instrument. All the wires, except for three, are for connecting sensors to DAISY. So the circuitry of this project is actually straightforward. There are also wires for connecting DAISY's audio out pin and ground to the audio jack. And one wire is for bridging the analog ground to the digital ground, which we don't need to talk about yet. The enclosure is built out of foam board. It could have been wood or 3D printed plastic, but foam board is easier to work with and more accessible to most people. So I went with that. I have a tutorial on it, by the way. I use standoffs so that I can unscrew the top lid and have access to the inside. This is especially useful if I had the back panel closed. After putting together the electronics, we're ready to do some programming. And if the word programming got you feeling a little bit tense, don't worry. Daisy got you covered because it's programmable in various languages. For anyone without text-based programming experience, Pure Data will be a great choice. As mentioned earlier, Pure Data is a visual programming language in which we connect a bunch of boxes together to make a custom synthesizer. And this channel has a bunch of Pure Data tutorials to get you started. And you can apply what you learn to DAISY. And one of the main reasons that got me excited about DAISY when it came out was that we can program it with MaxMSP Gen. So if you have MaxMSP experience, DAISY got you covered. And for all of you programming experts, you can of course use C++. So if you're an engineer who loves music, DAISY would be great for leveraging your expertise to create amazing projects. Because we can program in different languages, DAISY is suited for beginners to experts. There's actually one more programming language we can use with DAISY, and that is the Arduino IDE code. It's the programming environment that was designed for Arduino, and we can use it with DAISY. Because I have experience using Arduino, programming DAISY with the Arduino IDE felt intuitive. It was so intuitive that I ended up programming the portable synth with it. Unlike Pure Data, we can debug easier with the serial monitor. 
In real time, we can visualize variables such as sensor data. There are also a bunch of great sounding examples provided by DAISY developers, such as a Moog ladder filter emulation. So what I did was analyze the example codes and Frankenstein them together to get the synth sound that you heard in the beginning. Then I mapped the sensor data to the synth parameters. After I finished programming, I hit upload and now the code is inside of DAISY. Now we're pretty much all set to go. We can quickly set things up and start making music. So first, we'll connect the instrument to a guitar amp. Again, we can connect it to a headphone or audio interface. Then I'll power it with a battery. Let's use portable USB phone charger. And now it can be played anywhere at home. We can of course play outdoors. So my outdoor filming setup consisted of portable battery, USB cable, audio cable, line input recorder, and an earbud. So, if you want to get into the magical world of embedded audio, I highly recommend DAISY. Thank you Electrosmith for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching.